animal models. Yes, we do have several animal models. Um, actually, the animal models uh, emerged from when we started developing vaccines, particularly rabies vaccine. Uh, so the original rabies vaccine was grown in um, um, the brains of monkeys, actually. And when the vaccine was purified and we actually started vaccinating people, we actually induced acute disseminated encephalomyelitis, uh, which under the microscope has some similarities to multiple sclerosis. And so th that became known as uh, EAE, experimental allergic encephalomyelitis, and almost uh, every species has a version of EAE. Um, you know, in terms of what we, you know, our workhorse is, is in mice, particularly um, uh, black six using MOG as the water antigen. But we have SJL mice, we have Biotsi ABH mice, etc. We have uh, models in rats, models in uh, guinea pigs, rabbits, uh, and we have primate models as well. So it just depends on what question you're trying to, to answer. Uh, and most of our current therapies in multiple sclerosis have been tested uh, in EAE. My personal opinion is EAE is not MS. Uh, EAE is essentially a model of acute disseminated encephalomyelitis because the dirty little secret is you have to use an adjuvant to induce the disease, uh, and you don't get really any spontaneous uh, EAE occurring in animals. There is one particular model that's very interesting. There's a, a primate colony in, in Oregon, uh, in the United States, and this is Japanese macaques, and they come down with a spontaneous uh, encephalomyelitis. Uh, about 4% of animals in the colony come down with this a, a year. Uh, and under the microscope, it looks very much like MS lesions. And the MRI looks very MS-like. Uh, and the interesting thing about that model is they managed to isolate a gamma herpes virus that causes that disease. So it's a viral illness. Uh, and the reason why I'm interested in it is because it's a gamma herpes virus, uh, EBV, Epstein-Barr virus, which is quite closely related to MS from a causal perspective is also gamma herpes virus. So I personally think that's um, the animal model that recapitulates MS uh, the closest, um, uh, in, in, not only in terms of pathology, but in terms of potential pathogenesis. The pathogenesis of MS, so the current dogma states that you have a genetic predisposition, you get exposed to these environmental factors, and some chance thing happens, and it sets up this uh, autoreactive uh, uh, endophenotype. Uh, we know that that probably happens uh, in late childhood, early adolescence, and then there's a lag phase of about a decade, we think, before the actual disease manifests. So something must activate those autoimmune cells to go into the central nervous system, find their autoantigen, and set up a focal inflammatory lesion uh, in one of the structures within the central nervous system. That causes uh, damage to the oligodendrocyte axonal unit, uh, and we get uh, demyelination and conduction block, which causes a clinical attack. <clears throat> uh, what then happens is the repair mechanisms, so those demyelinated axons are remyelinated, or their axonal plasticity mechanisms that restore conduction, and we get a recovery uh, of function. But left behind is damage, uh, and those axons in a previous lesion are probably going to die off over time, and that sets up the substrate for what we would call disease progression outside of relapses, outside of new activity. And we see um, what happens is what we call delayed uh, worsening of this condition, which most people refer to as the progressive phase of the disease. And we think that phase is primed by focal inflammatory lesions. So this is why the whole treatment strategy is to prevent new lesions from forming, preventing damage from accumulating, and then hopefully preventing the cascade that results in a progressive disease. And um, we have biomarkers that can measure all of these processes. So for the focal little lesion, we pick up it on MRI, uh, usually on our what we call T2 scan, we pick up a white blob. And if it's acute, we can pick up blood brain barrier damage using gadolinium, a contrast agent. Um, we pick up the gradual worsening of the condition, the end organ damage I referred to, using brain volume uh, and other, other metrics for volume loss. Uh, and we also can pick up soluble uh, markers now. There are quite a few inflammatory markers that you can measure using panels of cytokines, for example, and, uh, in the spinal fluid. 
And when you damage axons and neurons, you release their contents, and we pick, it, we pick that up using a neurofilament level. So we have quite a lot of ways of monitoring this uh, disease process.